So hi, hello guys. Uh, my name is Joanne Wang. I'm a personal designer at Erector. Um, so I'm not sure if you noticed, but actually this month is um, a mental health awareness month in the entire like country. Um, so I feel like this is the perfect time to talk about like how to set up boundaries as a design leader. Um, all right. So uh, besides uh, that topic, and I also share like a, a picture that I think is pretty funny. Is actually you know, um, my sketches <laughs> over the photos I take uh, about the dough that I made to make a bread. Um, as a bread maker in my home, I want to make it fun to do so, to do the tedious work. But I think it's, it's you know, it's very helpful to relax, um, to find meaningful things outside of work. Um, you know, how about you guys? Do you have any hobbies? Um, you know, I would like to know more uh, if you want to share or chat or on the Slack channel. All right, so um, moving forward and just, you know, have some disclaimer. So the things I want to share, you know, it has no guarantee about like the completeness or accuracy or usefulness. I'm sorry to say that, but it's more about my personal uh, learnings and also the stories that I have um, to build boundaries and to grow as a design lead. Um, the other time is also like, uh, really thanks for being here um, to take care of yourself to treat yourself better, to understand like the importance of mental wellness, the importance of like setting up boundaries as well. Um, and the list. Um, so, you know, also thanks for your patience. Um, as you may notice that, uh, you know, English, I have, I'm like English as a second language speaker. So, you know, be mind if there may be some kind of like um, pronunciation that you, you may find is pretty hard to follow. So, yeah, um, that's some like kind of a situation here. Um, all right, so who am I? Um, short answer, um, yeah, obviously I'm a human being, uh, but you never know, maybe like aliens and nobody's around. Um, but um, so um, currently I'm principal product designer and director, like I was saying. Um, I'm sure maybe some of you don't know like what director is. Not, uh, that's fine, because it's actually the digital agency um, headquarters in uh, Helsinki. That's right, the fin Finland, um, the famous happiest country in the entire world, uh, according to Stephen. And um, so, you know, working with a can company that really value work-life balance, um, you know, value like transparency, value open-minded. Um, that's uh, actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a great uh, benefit for me. Also, we have a lot of like well-established clients, um, like, you know, top brands. Um, so the world is interesting. Um, it's also very exciting and challenging as well. Um, besides my work, um, I actually am introverted. Um, so I like to write a long articles to express my ideas because I like to see, uh, you know, spend time on my inner thoughts or ideas. Um, so I, you know, I have like a blog on media.com and then like so far have um, some like um, good audience to follow my articles. Um, I write the design stories about like, for example, enterprise um, design challenges. Um, and you know, work, working on complexity um, as a designer, etc. So you can check it out um, if I have time. Um, and also, as I was saying, like you know, having a hobby, like also try to find something that you feel like can make you relaxed and to like recharge yourself is very important. Um, besides my work, um, my spirit, uh, what I did, um, what I what I'm doing right now. So in my spare time, is like I like to draw and to paint. Um, I'm also a mural artist. I do a lot of like painting and drawing on the wall and also internal design um, just to get to keep my you know creative ideas flowing and also re, um, relax myself. Um, also I have a lot of like different types of like, painting and drawings ranging from watercolor, um, acrylic oil painting. Um, so um, you know when you painting when you, when you do like painting or drawing you might just focus on like you know the colors ideas that is kind of like say that you forgot all the stress, um, forgot all the issues. Um, I feel like it's a pretty healing process. Um, hopefully you can try try sometime or maybe you know I can have like a workshop later on um, about like using like painting and drawing to express yourself, um, you know, to recover or like recharge. 
Um, you know, work experiences in general is uh, I graduated from NYU, focused on digital media, and then work for a different bunch of companies. Some no notable ones like, you know, American Express as a fintech company and, uh, um, you know, e-coms and, uh, um, you know, other like fintech companies. Um, yeah. So, um, but the thing I want to share the most is actually my recent um, training from a Google Rare Design Leadership. That's why I actually want to talk about this uh, set up boundaries, um, right? Why I'm here. Um, of course, you know, Ross is very, is like smart enough to let me to talk this uh, topic, but you know, actually he's a very, very good man and very um, like passionate about design. That's why I'm here. Um, so um, I am a Rye Leadership, uh, uh, Leadership Academy delegate. And last year I was selected and to this um, leadership training sponsored by Google. Um, and this training actually is um, aimed to um, bring more diverse talent to the creative industry, um, especially for the underrepresented talent in the uh, creative industry. It's a six months, a six week program for with uh, different virtual classes with um, special guests and also in group uh, collaborations. Um, you know, I'm um, not sure if you notice, like actually for creative and technology industry, like tech industries, especially, there are like a diversity um, of gender or color or class or preferences or perspective, especially in the top, like the design leaders. Um, so you know, being a minority brings a lot of, of issues. The set of issues that typically the education that you know are on equipped to help us to deal with those issues. So this training helped um, those like uh, talents to learn how to deal with those issues and then to learn to build their strengths as well. So it has different like topics ranging from like setting boundaries, know your words, maximize your value and create your connections and find your ikiga. Um, for the time um, um, reason, uh, um, so I want to focus on the first one, like setting up boundaries. Um, boundaries, right? Why? Why setting up boundaries? For for some people, I think maybe that's so silly, like it's so basic. Like, grow up, like they they learn how to set up boundaries, so it's there's nothing to learn about. But for others, um, for example, me, I'm uh, like I was saying, like I'm introverted, right? And sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I I don't know how to express I have boundaries, you know, how to deal with that. I remember I have a like personal story, like, you know, when I was working at a punk company, um, at one time I, I worked on so many projects that I found myself like working like nights and weekends just to get things done. At the same time, I found myself, you know, have a hard time to fall asleep as well. So, and then I gradually realized that, you know, it's really time for me to really set the expectations for my teammates or partners. and. Because that causes a lot of stress, right? The stress actually can impact my quality, the quality of my work. Eventually, maybe like you know, my my health or physical health, or even that. Um, so I learn how to use like task management tools, or such as, for example, we are using like Jira, or I'm asking them to create tickets, or you know, so we can have like clear understanding about like the expectations, like the priorities and the timeline. Um, so in this way, um, so I'm able to manage my workload. Um, I also able to kind of like you know, give expectations and also set down some boundaries about how many things I, I can take on um, every time, right? Um, so that's my you know story that I think a set up boundaries is very important to keep a healthy and also productive uh, working style. But uh, it also really to like um, mental health, like I was saying, because um, boundaries it has different types, like it has like intellectual boundaries, uh, emotional boundaries, um, you know, physical boundaries or social boundaries, just different type of boundaries. You need to choose what are the type of boundaries, what are boundaries that are important to you. So we will get there in the, in the next few slides. Um, so in general, to me, um, setting up boundaries really helped me to provide like burnout, all right? Um, and, so I can keep like a great uh, mental wellness. Um, and then what I have learned from the training, you know, from all the other like 
um, designers or other like creative persons is like, you know, they were saying, you know, understanding the boundaries really to help um, first to make sure that, you know, our work are not taken for granted. Um, also, we want to communicate like our times, our emotions, our skills, or what else we can do, our limits, right? Um, so, you know, everyone has a great uh, understanding about those things. Um, also, like um, knowing when to say no or without feeling guilty, that's also important to others as well. Um, and the more important thing for others is um, really to um, have the confidence to acknowledge the different um, barriers or different challenges. Um, and also maybe like, you know, the boundaries that helpful is helpful for you or to keep like a great uh, workspace or uh, a good um, like a way of working in with your team. That's also very important. Um, that is very personal. So it's personal thing. That's why you need to build your own boundaries and then the actions or the all the tool tip that is helpful for you to maintain a good help, um, like um, help a healthy uh, relationship with yourself and also with others. Um, okay, um, but before we set up those like you know, definition and actions, um, it's great to first identify your values. Right, so for me, um, the values I was, I was like kind of like uh, focusing on is more about like the things that I'm doing well or the things that I'm good at. Um, you know, focusing like asking questions from your peers or maybe your managers, like, okay, what are my strengths? Okay, um, what are things that I'm good at? Um, what are the things, what, what makes me stand out? Why do you hire me? Um, so, you know, Getting those feedback is very helpful for you to build the confidence. Um, and then you gather all those different feedback and then you make it into like a, a sentence. Um, you know, for example, for me, like, um, you know, I'm really good at analytical thinking and also I'm a great, uh, a great learner. Uh, I'm also like brave to ask, ask like questions and also creating like pleasant, um, have a skill to create like present uh, user experience and user interface as well. So those are things that my team really value. Um, and uh, you know, it's good that you maybe um, can kind of like uh, reaching out to the team and find out the things that you are good at, identify your values, right? So um, the team have a good understanding about those when you work with them. So they, you know, you don't feel like, okay, you don't feel that you don't feel that, okay, I'm kind of feel guilty when I'm asking boundaries. It's more about like kind of a mutual respect because um, you have something to bring to the table as well. <clears throat> um, and then after that, um, you know, you can define the boundaries by yourself, right? So different, like we're saying, it's very personal. Um, you know, for me, I my my boundary is more about I want to have some free time to do my hobbies. Um, I want to have like less than five meetings per day. Um, so I can have like a, some like um, breaks or to relax the recharge um, and you know the important thing is like you know make it clear um, to yourself and also um, if you have issues you can communicate that with your team um, so you know it's more about like starting a conversation with yourself or your others um, defining what matters to you the most um, but I also uh, understand that to some environment or a company, uh, it's kind of like a taboo to talk about like boundaries or even like, of course, like mental health, mental wellness as well. Um, it's good that if you can have like a small group of people that, you know, you can share your values or you can have like a, a conversation with you know, your friends or your, your teammate about like, you know, how to um, kind of create a healthy ways of working. Um, but um, I know like this topic <laughs> may sound kind of like, you know, uh, intimidating or it's not very comfortable. So, um, you know, if you feel like the, the, you know, the next slides or is not useful, then, um, you know, I also totally understand. And that is okay. Like for people that are not comfortable about talking about boundaries or kind of mental health. Um, so, you know, don't feel pressure that, um, that is, this is, 
something that people have to do. Um, it really depends on uh, individuals. Um, okay, besides that, um, the way that um, I learned how to define boundaries start with like feelings. I feel overwhelmed when something happened, or I feel stressful when something happened to me, or like that. Or for example, I feel overwhelmed if I have like you know more than five meetings every day back to back back to back or so I really need some time to recharge and then like you know either take a walk, 10 minutes walk or having a snack or something in between. Right. So um you can do so um as well, you know, defining by starting as I feel stressful when something happened. And then it just starts start to kind of like naturally describe the boundaries for you. Um, and then second, like what you need to do to support the boundary, right? Um, so um, for example, you know, what I need to do is like, I really need to prioritize the things I want to do the most. Um, I, I also need to do this like, you know, set a, a create a, like a box on my calendar to block out and other invites if I want to focus on designing um, screens particularly. Um, so, um, it also depends, like also maybe for others, they just need to have a person they, they can chat about or just you know, to kind of like, or have a place they want to relax for five minutes. Um, if that's all um, sounds very reasonable. Um, and after that, you think about like what you need to do. And of course, when you want to kind of maybe um, bring the idea to the team, you also Thought of, we may need to think about like what the benefits. Um, the benefits, like of course, when you have like a boundaries, boundaries is not a, a kind of excuse for me to actually say no to everything. Uh, you want to make it clear that it's more about to maintain a good uh, per, a productivity, to maintain a good uh, mental health, um, build a good relationship with the team as well. Um, so uh, you know you may have different kind of like. Uh, scenarios that you can bring to the table about the benefits um, or like um, you can you know have a deeper conversation with the colleagues um, you can brainstorm that together um, a lot of times more about like um, you know create your own like circles on um, having this circle to help you to build like your mutual understanding about your way of, the ways working or the benefits that you you can get from this circle where the mutual understanding of each other's work style. And after you know you have maybe a good understanding about the benefits and you know what our boundaries are, like you know what I should do about it when there's no boundaries, um, then what I should do when there's no boundaries, right? Um, maybe you need to think about those like um, actions as well, or you may you may need to actually maybe schedule a meeting with your teammate um, or a ritual um, or um, talk about like how we can, um, you know, maybe adjust the working schedule. Um, a lot of times it's really about like a communication with, with a team um, or um, having like build out a hobby, like I was saying, like, you know, find a way to relax, to not think about the work at all after like, you know, you just um, been through an entire day. That's all. Um, very important actions to take. Um, so I also want to share like some kind of uh, very helpful notes that I learned from the Google Rare Leadership Training about uh, some other techniques that people have. Um, so you know why we need those boundaries um, and then how we can get those. Um, some people may feel like, okay, um, there's a difference between like keep connecting to people and also disconnecting. Um, so sometimes when you may realize that it's, um, it's hard to change, maybe you have kind of like environment or a culture, a maybe a little bit toxic. Um, so um, you may need, need to decide, like sometimes you need to connect with people, but sometimes you need, just need to disconnect for a day or two. Um, and then once you feel recharged and then, or you feel calm, um, you can come back. Uh, to say, oh, oh, okay, I'm just um, um, to, like you know, just saying that to yourself. I feel recharged, and then I just I can continue um, and do to per continue per performing. Um, so I think like for for that, it's okay to keep to keep disconnected for like you know, 
couple hours or a day or two. Um, if you feel like that is something's a little bit like uncomfortable or toxic. Um, but at the same time, you know, just keep the conversation going. Um, I heard people are saying that, um, you know, when you talk with your teammates about the boundaries, um, it just like help them to understand your, um, you know, your expectations as well, you know, help understand how other to treat you better. Um, in some cases, um, sometimes they don't know that you have a boundary. Um, and also it's good that um, you are comfortable talking about like, you know, the, the boundaries in a way that, okay, maybe sometimes you know that you have a limitation about the working hours, you have limits, then that is okay. As long as I, just, I can do my work, um, I can finish the tasks, um, but I have limits, right? Um, so I think having that understanding is very important to, to say, oh, I acknowledge my limits. Um, and uh, by, you know, I just want to maintain like a good, healthy productivity um, working style. Um, yeah, those are some like very helpful um, insight from the training that I got. Um, okay, moving forward, uh, what do you feel like if your boundaries are expected? Um, right, so just think about, okay, well, if, you know, if I can get the free time to do my own thing, or if, you know, I don't need to feel stressful, then like, you know, what are the great things that can happen to me? Um, just a way that, like, you know, to help you to keep motivated. Um, so all of that, uh, that's kind of like a framework help you to build that boundaries. Um, so I can share with you kind of like, um, later on, there is a, a kind of a, a canvas like to help you set up boundaries, like, you know, go through those, those are the kind of like questions that we have been go through, like we have um, in terms of like what are the boundaries, what does it mean to you, and you know, what do you do when you want to set up boundaries, what do you do when others don't respect those boundaries, right? So this is a conversation that I also learned from the, the Google Rare training as well. So, you know, uh, that is very helpful if you want to kind of practice um, in our Slack channel, that's okay as well. Um, so besides those framework, there may be some situation or like particular conversation that may um, sounds like uncomfortable or stressful. Um, some small techniques that I learned is very helpful. is like, you know, ask clarification question, ask clarification, right? So like, you know, what do you mean by that exactly? Like, you know, can you give me more examples? Um, or you maybe you have so many asks from others, you may you, you may need to ask like, you know, how should we reprioritize re, re, um, prioritize our backlog? Um, those are really good um, ways to really kind of like um, you know relax and then to just start a conversation like in a rational way. Um, Especially when you feel stressful, you, you might is kind of like maybe become more negative in terms of like maybe any kind of comments or conversation. So um, having a principal charity um, in a way that okay, when maybe like you know when you have a um, a top meeting or um, a different uh, schedule or conflicts. Um, so I always try to kind of remind myself to interpret to interpret uh, other statements in a rational way. Um, and also considering as fast, uh, like, uh, positive, uh, integration. Um, so like the conversation with others can go smoothly. So we want to collaborate with, so I don't want to kind of uh, run into a situation, just become a debate, uh, with a lot of negative thoughts. Um, so that's a um, few ways that, um, help me to maintain a good, uh, a kind of relationship or a good, uh, like, uh, mindset. Besides that, I think asking for help is very important as well. Um, so to some people that, you know, they don't want to be seen as fragile or weak. Um, also, they don't want to be seen as just taking advantage of others, just asking a lot of help from others. Um, so for myself, um, I'm an introvert. Like, um, I don't like to ask help a lot, but um, I think over the years, I learned that sometimes you really to kind of like in order to build this like a relationship with my teams, it's okay to ask help uh, in return. I also can help them as well. It's more about like, you know, building the trust with others. Um, I trust them to help me. 
Um, so sometimes if I run into issues, I will just ask like, how might we solve it together? Um, or if, like I was saying, you know, if I have a lot of like different asks or demands from my teammates or other teams, um, you know, I can ask for help to, um, for example, ask them to create those like tickets instead of just like, you know, just uh, um, casually just <laughs> throw me a task. Um, ask them to spend some time, a little bit more time to create a description or help me to create a guideline or prioritize it. Um, so, you know, I think that's uh, it's very helpful um, in order for them to understand my workload and also in order for me um, to kind of like a build kind of a, a relationship with them as well. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so all of that, like, and there's a, a kind of like a framework, a, a disco, like define boundaries. I statement, I, you know, I feel, but I start with I feel, I need, um, that's help you to define the boundaries. And then simplify that, it's like, you know, what do you need to get done? What do you need to feel relaxed or to set, set up boundaries and constraints of outcome? Um, this is just like a framework that uh, you can uh, leverage. Um, and then this, uh, Again, um, is the framework in uh, Canvas that you also can leverage um, to write down what matters to you about the uh, about the boundaries. Um, and you can do these exercises um, right now, like if you feel comfortable in the Slack channel, and then maybe we can talk about that uh, together uh, in the Slack channel, or you know you can do that in you know, personal time or with your teammates together. Um, yeah, so. I think you know that's 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 is for now. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I hope this is helpful. Um, again, like this is, I'm not like a psychology. I'm not like um, expert on this, um, but uh, I feel this could be helpful or benefit to anyone who is in need. Mm -hmm.